was taught by my elders that when you come to a country that's not yours, that you welcome yourself by taking your shoes off and walking on the ground. And also to acknowledge the water that nourishes the First Nations people and feeds them by wetting your face and cleansing yourself. I'm very thankful and grateful to be here. They say, they say 70% of our body is uh, water, so, you know, our, our body can't function without water, so uh, water is a major, major part in our lives, eh? like a uh, spiritual connection. There's not much clean water directly in the area, so a lot of our water is pumped from a Jackie Jackie. It's a wild river system that needs to be treated. This plant was built back in 98, 2000 for a population of 1,100 people. Population's now about 3,200 people here. Basically three times the size and the plant's still producing the same amount of water. The state of the system prior to Viale turning up is, was it the worst state that it is at the moment? It wasn't at the point that it wasn't supplying potable drinking water it was just more difficult for it to be done. Because we've got all this water at the moment because the Jadid River is half full, for so full. So going to waste, we should store it, especially for the dry season. I'd argue that even in this dry season coming, we're going to struggle to meet the supply that the community demands. We're at the Bamaga water plant. This is a, basically a $2 million asset. So when the last operator finished up, the council had nobody to run it, so they basically ran it best they could for seven odd months. I was the mayor, the mayor back then. We had the, the, um, the handover. And that's why my name's on the door. Mm. I can tell you, I, I didn't want it as, as a council, as a local government. It's high maintenance. We still got about 70% of asbestos pipe underground. And yeah, like I say today, you know, from the past to the future, I would drink water from old Mapun, new Mapun, and I drink bottled water, yeah. <laughs> now, we really wanted a, a supplier that would come and have a good working relationship with the council and, you know, do some strategic work around water supply. It wasn't just based on price, it was based on that experience and that knowledge in terms of the complexity we face with water operations here in the NPA is that, you know, that was the recommendation that came through to the council was that Veolia was the preferred supplier. To tell you the truth, I was a bit wary. In being a small community, you've got to be wary of who, what, who comes in and especially being a big company and being worldwide and what, what do they really want. The best thing they did was put somebody local who, who knows the treatment pad himself, that, that was John. I've known him, I think most of my life, I think I've known him, yeah. He's been here for years, yeah. So he pretty much knows everything. And you can listen, you can almost hear the pumps there and how they operate. And you can tell that something's not right. Hi. Can somebody hand me a, like a... Hold on to the spotlight. Uh, like... <laughs> <laughs> Knowledge is invaluable. You can't document that information that he has in his head. There's just so much of it. From the outside, he's a humble, quiet guy, but as soon as I joined, I started working here, man, he's a, he's, he's a workhorse, eh? There's so many good things here, you can say about Veolia and how they 
present themselves and how professional they are, you know, and carrying part of who they are, you know, Veolia, and how they, um, how they want to connect community and, and with the services they provide. I thought, wow, you know, these guys, man, they really care. So that's what I basically, um, that my very first impression is. Like the previous um, operators, well, I feel that haven't engaged, enough engaged or with, with community, but Veolia is actually coming out. It's more on engaging grassroots level, working with the people, giving people the opportunity, and I'm um, just looking forward to working with yeah. them more and um, them creating more positions for our people. Enough. I've come to love this company a lot, like, yeah, it just made me feel so welcome and at home and see myself six years or five, five, six years from me now working here or in any form of Viola work. You know, working for other companies as well and pretty, pretty different Viola is really good. Yeah, it's awesome too. I'll be satisfied in what I've done here if I can give them a plant that's future-proofed them for the next 10 years and it's 100% run by the life. You see that across Australia where rivers have run dry. I'd like to see that sort of return to its local, like a natural state. That's what I'd like to see. You know, it's already a beautiful place. We want to preserve and prolong that for, you know, the future generations. Like no one really pays attention to the little flowers that are around there, but when you, when you start picking them and putting them together, and then you realise how beautiful they are, you know. Looking at a, a green path study up here, so we'll conduct that on the water treatment plant and also in the town, which is currently all powered by diesel, diesel fired power through generators. Makes power an expensive resource. The aim would be to put in PV solar and reduce their power cost. So when Veolia turned up, systems have been changed in the water treatment plant and Veolia has been reverse engineering some things and looking at ways of improving. I think it's good what Viola is doing now for the community. Listen to what they want to plan and for the future and what they want to do, I think it's a good thing. The water what we got today now is like more quicker. We're quite happy with what we get today from the tap, you know, like mm. it's good, you know, not like before, like I said, you know, today different, good. you know. Good as a goal, right? Yeah. Good as gold. Good as gold. <laughs> when you, you say the success of this coming to fruition, it's I, I'm really emotionally connected to it, so it's nice. It's really nice to see. We've got 14 islands communities out there. Um, they need good drinking water. They need a good supply of water. How do we educate them from we're lucky we've got a um, river here. How do we help them out? No, well, you get this right, then you can go to community. Take, take a local employee of your to go and visit, and they, they can talk on behalf. What we are as an Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people are resilient. And there's always opportunities for growth and support if you need it. Anything that I do in my current job be it holistically, from a national perspective, a stakeholder engagement perspective, or grassroots at the operational level. Everything I do is a love letter to First Nations people, and I really want that to sing through.